Other things that, that are non-pharmacological interventions that we should consider for patients with asthma is that the bacterial and, and viral infections kind of are one of the major causes of exacerbations with asthma. And so one way, especially for viral processes, that we can control this is by proper immunization. And so we can see that we should be considering annual influenza vaccinations for patients over six months of age. And then for those that are 19 years and older, um, in many of your developed countries, they now recommend a pneumococcal polysaccharide vaccine or a pneumonia vaccine for these individuals, as well as making sure that these individuals are all up to date on regular childhood and adult immunizations. Because what that does is many of these things we're immunizing against can be bacterial or viral processes. And if we can minimize or build up the immune system to those, it can then help protect the person from having an asthma exacerbation. Other comorbid conditions can either worsen asthma or make asthma harder to control, and those are allergic rhinitis, chronic sinusitis, or nasal polyps. Because when we look at this, this is that inflammation of the upper airway, and since the upper airway is connected to the lower airway, we want to make sure we control upper airway inflammation so that it helps control the lower airway inflammation. And so this could be that they maybe need a nasal corticosteroid um, as well as an inhaled corticosteroid. Sometimes patients that have gastroesophageal reflux disease or GERD, um, can, this can actually cause their asthma to flare up. And the reason for that is, is when we think about the trachea, which is our air, our windpipe, and when we think about the esophagus, which is our food tube, they're innervated by the same vagal nerve. And so if the esophagus is spasming and irritated because of acid reflux, this can also then irritate the trachea. And so oftentimes we need to control the GERD in order to help control the asthma as well. And then if somebody has um, obstructive sleep apnea, um, this can then be sometimes confused with asthma, or if they, they can have coexisting apnea with the asthma. And so we want to control the apnea because we know that these patients are, if we don't control the sleep apnea, they're actually at higher risk of dying. And so we want to control the apnea as well as control the asthma.